Okay. Welcome to session 58 of the Sphere of Power campaign. Heights, lights, and fights. Gauntlet of whites, shadows, mummies, and other undead was not quite enough to stop the party's progress, but Varric paid a heavy toll. Down twice as the party crossed the perilous span over the infested tombs below, the paladin barely clings to life as they attempt to regroup and recoup in a large circular room south of the bridge. A collection of ancient inscriptions has garnered the attention of the lore seekers in the group, while the healers tended to the unconscious Goliath in a room that was otherwise empty, excluding an altar of glass that is illuminated by a shaft of light piercing from the darkness above. With an opportunity to rest in hand and a place of relative safety beyond the bridge of death, the party takes some needed time to lick their wounds and consider their next steps. So that is where we are at, folks. How would you like to proceed? What, what preparations are we taking before a long rest? How much uh, hit dice do you have? Um, Varric, or do we need to use a healing potion or something to get you more alive? I mean, so you're not mostly dice. dead. Ms. Um, address up there to be full on hit dice. The rest of you are all at about half. And my max hit points was affected in that fight. I, yep. I am unconscious until we hit the long rest button. <laughs> Matt, do you recall how many hit points you lost in that hit? Um, I had uh, 20 because I had 54 hit points. Okay. I had a pretty low hit points. Yeah. You know what? I don't want to shortchange you. I'm going to go back and verify. Word. I seem to remember those, more than that. Do those come... Uh... Uh, do those come back with a long rest? Yeah, they only come back from a long rest. Okay. But it's not all. I have a po yeah. I have a potion of greater healing, okay. which I'd be willing to pass over. It's if not that would be helpful. Yeah. What'd you say? I said it's not easy. <laughs> <laughs> Is that, I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I wouldn't waste any potions or just, I mean, maybe a little bit of healing. We can, magic, always, but... we can always use it after your hit dice are done. And yeah, I have no wounds. Where we're like, I'm, I'm healed up, but we just said, like, oh, okay. because I went down twice, I'm pretty messed up. So yeah, and, and my max hit points being down. All right, let's see. Strength train, strength train, strength train. No. Yeah, you guys, I think whatever magic we did last session before we went, because I don't have any wounds, I'm at 34 hit points. Alex, that's a loud keyboard. <laughs> Sorry, it's, it's, it's the one I've got. I don't think the built-in one for my laptop is much quieter. <laughs> All right, if I'm looking at this right, it looks like actually you lost 22 points. Oh, oh, all right, solid. So that put me at 56, okay. Uh, after we complete the long rest. But so, yeah. yeah. Like I said, I thought it was a little more than 20. Yeah, okay, cool. All right, so we know where that is.
Do we have a timestamp for beginning of session? Uh, yes, give me just a moment. Okay. God, I love that feature. Uh, okay. Um, calendar. There you go. Thank you. Mm hmm All right. Well, let's see, that was the shadow that did that damage to you, according to my notes. Shadow. Yep, was the specter. All right, so. It must succeed on a constitution saving throw or its hit point maximum is reduced by an amount equal to the damage taken. This reduction lasts until the creature finishes a long rest. All right, so yeah, you don't need any special magic in order to regain it. That's definitely 5e, but um, so be it. All right, so <clears throat> use up your hit dice, folks, before I trigger the, um, the long rest. I don't think I need to. No. Yeah, actually, everyone looks like they're at full health except for Redra. There we go. All done. <laughs> yeah, some of us didn't get damaged, and some of us might have hit the hit to roll the hit dice uh, last session. All right, so there's one long rest. Knowing we would be taking a long rest. <clears throat> First thing. And my puppy is staring at my pizza for breakfast. Back over to Varric and give him back his full health. Okay. All right, any other maintenance we need to uh, address? Once, going twice. All right. Yeah, look at that. That's solid. I like being healthy again. <laughs> Spell side. All right. What what you gonna do? To reread the uh the yeah, let me reread the description. Shaft of light. Uh, I was gonna say Alex and I uh Alex and I addressed a little bit of the uh inscriptions last week um so those come into play yeah all right so let me read the descriptions and then i'll have um you or alex uh, read your translations a shaft of light pierces the darkness from the dome ceiling above illuminating an altar in the center of the 50 foot diameter room the walls are covered with five different inscriptions the altar seems to be made of clear glass Carved doors stand closed at each compass point. So um, during your rest, uh, Kaylee and presumably to some extent, um, 
Haig, to keep his mind off of his brother while he recuperated, um, helped with the translations. You guys want to share those with the group? I'm pulling them back up. Mm -hmm. it says, may seeker grant thee welcome to his place of rest and worship. May he aid you in your kindness and grant unto you the powers that you deserve. Mighty, mighty seeker, God of life, purifier of the unclean souls that have lost their way to heavenly rest is honored here if thou believest in his might and glory to sacrifice at his altar shall gain thee a boon seeker shall shine forth in the last days when all the world despairs to assist in the destruction of the great evil that spreads across our land his might shall sunder the restless spirits and put an end to their sinful evils and that's all of them Bark has two thoughts. Yeah. First thought, he's totally down to sacrifice. Like, be it sounds like I'm some kind of bloodletting sacrifice a bit at the altar to open a door. Or option two, we kill Mizram and he dies as an animal, but then he comes back as an elf <laughs> with a little bit of damage, and then we heal him. Uh, it doesn't necessarily, do you think it has to be a blood sacrifice? I don't know. If you think yourself mighty enough to sacrifice at the altar or something along those lines. Some of you Double. may die, but it's a risk we're willing to take. <laughs> can we get a, can we get like a um, history or religion check and see if any of us knows anything about this Good particular um, God and forms of worship for this god you may what kind of sacrifices so. he likes you may do so but since none of you are indigenous to the area please do so at minus two okay. we're actually doing something intelligent rather than sacrificing somebody first <laughs> yeah uh, hence, red dress, <laughs> hence red dress point earlier this week about the player willing to touch the cursed items <laughs> Hmm. Not bad. It works out sometimes. All right. So, Varric, um, you actually do seem to apparently know something about the um, <laughs> Egyptian mythos on, on uh, Toril. And Kaylee, you don't know much, but you are able, you know enough that you're able to confirm to yourself anyway that what. Um, Varric is about to share or does share um, sounds consistent with what you've heard, um, which as far as you're concerned are songs and rumors and stories. You don't know how true they are, um, which is true of any religion for that matter, but um, uh, you would say to an extent that you do believe there is some viability in this, this religion. That these gods do exist. They're not cult gods or made up gods, but actually ones that do have an influence, um, if not on all of Toril, at least on this, this region. Um, and basically, let's see. Um, right, just a second. All right, so I'll be back. Okay. I'm gonna find what I can share with you that you would know. 
All right. All right, so one thing you do know about him is that he has some association with Anubis. You do not know exactly how or what, and your impression is that Anubis is the chief god of the dead. You're not sure if Seeker is a reference to a sibling or an alternate name for him in a different um, dialect or subculture. Um, but your impression of him is, is that he is somewhat weaker than Anubis is depicted. Okay. Um, he is usually depicted as a hawk-headed biped. Um, he is also known for a hawk-like cry that also songs have tied to the cry that Osiris gave out when he was killed by Set. Um, and some actually say that since he was the first one that, um, that died, uh, this actually was the cry that invoked or created the gods, god or gods of death. Um, he is very frequently revered by craftsmen um, and is associated with copious amounts of silver. Of silver? Silver. Most <clears throat> um, individuals who paid homage to uh, Seeker in death usually were buried with large amounts of silver as opposed to gold. Interesting. They also have a strange love for onions. Onions? onions. Their um, priests usually wear garlands of onions. Mm. Huh. And is believed to be if he has a, if he is a diminutive version of the god of death he, his portfolio seems to be focused on resurrection and rebirth. I'll ask if anybody has any silver because I don't have any. Uh, well, I'm willing to pay for your boon if it's a if it's a health boon or something like that. Then I think you could use that right now. So let me check my inventory. Yeah, boon first. sounds pretty nice. And I just I almost do not, died. I do not have any silver. I don't think I've got gold. I've I got have a little bit of silver. I have no silver. And I'll another, trade another you thing, parts platinum. Barak, another thing also is, is that you are aware that onions are considered a symbol of fertility and in particularly rebirth, which does seem mm -hmm. to be consistent with his perception as a god of rebirth or resurrection. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Oh, and one last among thing. The, among... His symbol yep. is a boat perpetually sailing towards the dawn. Oh. Hmm. Oh, we saw that picture. Like... Wait, wait. Yeah, it looks I... like. Sorry. It looks like the only silver this group has on us is my twelve pieces and Mizram's one. <laughs> Any in the party sheet? That's where I got the information. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can anybody make food? Like, create. <coughs> food and water <coughs> like it could make me an onion and I can go up to the altar and like say thank you to this guy for not letting me die in his temple the seeker well I'm thinking uh, the other thing I was thinking is if you have any wounds that you could slightly open and uh, maybe drip some blood onto the table you could have a little bloodletting on it if you wanted to try sure. that Sure. Actually, Varric, now that you bring it up, I would say it's even, um, it would be consistent and appropriate that in your unconsciousness or as you awoke and came <laughs> back to see a vision or an image of what you believe or recognize to be Seeker. So when you wake up and they start talking about Seeker in the, in the inscriptions, you're like, yeah. He's here. Oh. He's visiting us. He saved my ass. Yeah. Oh, cool. That's awesome. Okay. 
Well, I don't have an onion. And I have no way of making an onion myself. Um, there's probably no onions in our rations. Probably no onions in the rations. Would the herbalism kit have dried bits of onion, possibly? I don't know. I would say an extremely <laughs> low chance. I mean, it's not considered the most effective of medicinal herbs. Um, you know, for yeah. garlic, it would be very useful in, you know, in uh, Van Helsing's right. assortment of <laughs> herbs, but we'll not rule it out. Cover all your bases, dude. Cover all your bases. Sacrifice a material item, a food item, and a blood item, and uh, see what happens. Okay. So, yeah, I'll, I'll walk up to the altar and I'll put a ration out there because that's all I got. Um, I mean, I'll trade you Electrum for your silver, K.L.E. All right, hold on. Or Platinum. And he doesn't have his mace out, but he's got his hammer. And I'm just going to lay that reverently on the altar as well. Well, actually, all right. So you're going to walk up to the altar, correct? Mm -hmm. As you walk up to the altar, Ooh. your mace starts glowing, or actually it starts humming. Very My subtle, mate. subtle. And you look down at it and notice that it is actually glowing. Not brightly, <laughs> but not unlike Sting does in the uh, the Hobbit movies. Oh, okay. And at the same time, never have enough space on this damn screen no matter how big it is <laughs> okay where did it go oh no wonder i can't find it all right so as soon as you come within about three feet of the altar you notice the um you notice the sound or you feel the hum, you notice the glow. And at the same moment within your, within your mind, you hear the notion or thought seeker asks. <laughs> Give him the item, bro. Yeah. I'll, so if the mace is glowing, I'll pull that off. You know what I mean? I'll, put my hammer on my belt and put the mace on the altar, light a couple of incense. Um, and yeah, just, you know what I mean? Show my, say a prayer or whatnot in uh, Johnny. All right, so you're putting the mace down? Yeah. As soon as you put the mace down, a bright flash of light fills the entire room. Um, and you notice that your mace is gone. It's not there anymore. Mm. Oh. That's it. Seems to be it. Just disappeared. Oh, mm. lovely. Well, he appreciates it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll just be like, okay. And there's, all right. The ration Nothing in the room changed. Then about, 20, then about 20 seconds later, right after you're kind of accepting the fact that your mace is gone, this suddenly appears on the altar. There's a thing. Actually, there's only one, even though it's, it's pluralized. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right. A leather glove. Shaped like a glove with holes for fingers and a harness that extends down the wrist and forearm. Hmm. All right. 
who's got detect magic. I do. I'll cast detect magic as I look at it. Holes for fingers? It doesn't seem to be anything defensive. It's not that, you know, it's not like heavy leather or whatnot, but it does seem to be rather ornate and well woven. And magical since he has detect magic up. If he does, then yes, indeed. It certainly is glowing. I can settle in and cast identify on it if uh, we want to wait. I mean, in trade for a mace, I say yes. <laughs> I also don't have like a bad feeling about it. Like, I don't know, look at Redrath and be like, I mean, there's nothing creepy about the way this looks. You know, it doesn't look evil. Like no, that you're book. sure. Your, your power and senses are not going off because of it. <laughs> um, yeah, I will. I will uh, motion to the item, and if um, if Varric is cool with it, I will settle yeah. on the floor and do my identify spell. Holes for fingers. So it's like the holes, the fingers aren't really there. There's just spots for your own fingers to slide through the top of the glove. Mm -hmm. What the freak? I wonder if we're going to need it later. All right, about this time, as uh, Redreth is sitting down and uh, doing his identify spell, maybe about halfway through it, um, Varric, Fekin, mm -hmm. and Haig all notice something. You look up at each other, as a matter of fact, and realize that the three of you are hearing the same thing and all look towards the south door. There is some kind oh. of slithering sound just outside the door. Oh. Quite honestly, the sound oh, is not unlike that of snakes. Probably more than one. I could go for some snake. No mm. rattling, but you're definitely hearing the snake. When you said your health is good right now? And just mm -hmm. to point out, it's not that you suddenly noticed it, but that the sound got closer in the time between the time that you noticed it. And by the time it gets to the edge of the door, pretty much the rest of the party, except for Redreth, um, has noticed it. Uh, you know, fireball takes care of snakes. I, I should point out you all feel relatively confident that the door that's there is going to prevent anything from coming in unless it's like Medusa herself or something like that. All right, so meanwhile, if you guys are not going to take any proactive action, down persists outside the door as, um, as Redreth uh, completes his uh, identify spell. And by the time he is done, let's, let's see. Yeah. Okay, so by the time he is done, identifies it as the harness of speaker. <clears throat> it's a unique item. Very useful powers. 
Um, and what you do know is that it comes to you with two charges. Okay. Otherwise, the rest of the details should now be exposed inside the, par uh, the party inventory. Folks, what is next? There it is. I want to read the harness. Uh, it's a powerful gift from the gods. Um, so it's going to be strict to clerics or no? Correct. Actually, yeah, you as a paladin would be able to use it. You, you still use clerical magic. That's us. We're cool. cool anyway. I was like, ah, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Lost a mace to win something for a second. Hey, he could have lost something to have to give to his brother. Could have lost a magical mace to get a leather glove in return and a wave and a nod and thank you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, payment for saving his ass. Right. Totally. I, would, I would ask for a trade. Totally a trade. <laughs> this bugs my mind. <laughs> the charge man on his own respect to the bolts, each bolt uses one charge five minutes. Okay, so question. Do we feel the presence gone? The presence of what? Of Seeker. Oh, and you also get your mace back once you use both the charges on it. I was waiting for you to, to notice that. Um, you don't really feel his presence. It's more that Varric is just, you know, reading the signs. You know, he was brought back to life. He saw an image of what he recognized as Seeker and sure, and, you know, and, you know, from our standpoint, it also could have been that he subconsciously heard her speaking about Seeker as she translated it and he formed the image of, of him in his mind. But um, as far as Varric is concerned, it was Seeker who saved his butt. Okay. Uh, I'm, well, you, you, I'm, you, don't, you don't feel an overwhelming presence. He's not appearing before you. There's no direct speech. And as a matter of fact, until the rest of you approach the altar, He's the only one that's heard anything. No, you did see the glow. I'm curious <laughs> if uh, we are limited to one of these. Is my my point? I mean, I'm gonna walk up. I'm gonna walk up to the altar and see if my mace plus one starts to glow. No, it does not. Okay, that answers that question. Mm -hmm. Worth a shot. Yeah, so I'm gonna, that was I'm gonna definitely something much more quantifiable, whether or not your stuff is glowing. Okay. Yeah, are you guys going to cool. have an inner party discussion about the um, what you're hearing on the south side of the wall? Or you're just like... standing with a, with an arrow uh, to her bow, um, not drawn, not pointed anywhere, but she's definitely staring at the door, waiting for somebody to go open it. <laughs> That's what I was I'm gonna say that when I asked Matt or I you know turn to Varric and, and go, I'm kinda I could eat. Yeah, let's go. Let's do it. The south door, right? You guys wanna ready to pack a fight? Get some good supper. I have a couple fireballs queued up. Roast cool. you up some snakes. Let's throw it out. You do realize that um, if you throw a fireball in here, we're all toast. This is a 50 well, foot diameter room, not a 30 foot. 
Okay. You you do have a little wiggle room, but you're you're probably going to get a wee bit barbecued. I've eaten a couple cool. fireballs in my day. I'll be all right. Yeah, it's a little chilly in this room anyway. <laughs> Not for us, we're giants. We like it. <laughs> Word. So do you want us to like reach and clear style open the door or just kick the door open and jump back? Actually, if he did throw a fireball, we could breach and clear. Pop the yeah. door open, cast a fireball in the in the square in front of it, shut the door real quick. There you go. In the general channel. My thoughts on that. <laughs> Hold on, I gotta see this. <laughs> 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 so um so um the 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 other thing is um if we're going to do the fireball plan this is this is an out of character comment if we're going to do the fireball plan is there a reason does anybody have mage hand maybe a mage hand can open the door oh mage hand door i don't have anything like that I mean, that's, that's an out of character comment, but because um, Kaylee would not bother to say anything, but um, she would be wondering that. I'll kill us some Maybe snakes. Being a down. common wizard cantrip. What if there's more zombies and I can use my harness? <laughs> what? Well, we already know Maybe about- Maybe there's zombie snakes. Spider legs. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Snake is something still in real life that I haven't tried that I'm is on my checklist. Yeah. yeah. Let's to role play it would be kind of fun. <laughs> Let's do it. So uh, I can I'm mage I was gonna say I can mage hand the door, but then it would be around before I can cast the fireball. So you know. I say we okay. we cast the fireball and see if we can close the door quick enough to get it to latch and have it stay in there. I mean, as for the fireball, uh, hang on, does this give me resistance? You know, we are actually assuming that this is, these are bad guys. We could end yeah, up fireballing a room are. where it's just making noise. <laughs> That's true. Let's just open the door. Or we could end up firing, or, or we could end up fireballing a uh, room full of potential allies, you know, Snake people or turn allies. some neutral creatures, or turn some neutral creatures hostile. You never know. That's why. <laughs> that's why Kaylee's not actually aiming her bow at anybody, but she's definitely ready to bring it up if whatever's on the other side of the door reacts to opening it with hostile actions. With my understanding of the pantheon, with Varric's understanding of the pantheon, what I know that like. Snakes are usually kind of not good. This is true. Like a bunch of snakes in it in this pyramid. Why didn't it have to be know. snakes? Yeah, like <laughs> all right. So let's get on either side of the door. We'll give Redrith plenty of clearance for his fireball and let him mage hand the door. What's happening? Well he can't he can't do both though. Oh, that's right. I just, I, they, yeah, there would be a full round before I could actually cast it. So, because I can, because yeah, so they're both, they're both actions. So, yeah, let's just open the door and see what happens. Hell with it. Sorry, I keep moving around. <laughs> All right. So, who's opening it, Haig or Varric? I'll, uh, which way does it swing? Does it Actually, swing Hague's, towards Hague's Varric? closer to the handle. Okay, so I'll swing the handle towards Varric. I'll use my action to open it, and Varric can use his action to kick it closed once in Red case throws a fireball there. in there. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's see. Everyone go ahead and do an initiative roll. Ooh. <laughs> oh 
gosh, horrible. <laughs> nice, nice. We're gonna get surrounded by snakes, dude. <laughs> my, dex, my dex rolls are on point, just as just as usual. <laughs> Sweet. Don't worry. Next, uh, next level is a uh, is a yes, ability I... modifier. Yeah. So yeah. One, of, one of those points is going into decks. So I'm only going to get a minus one instead of a minus two. So. Well, oh, <laughs> there's there's one interesting caveat here. Hague is the one opening the door, so nothing can happen until he actually acts. Oh, very. At true. the end of the round. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody ready's in action. No, actually, I'm moving him up to the top of the initiative because every well, yeah, I guess everyone's waiting for him to uh, to open the door. By <laughs> then, so. Yeah. Yeah. Like one of those totally unnecessary slow motion scenes in a movie. Yeah. Yeah. That, that sounds very much like it. All right. So, um, Feckish, what do you have readied? I'm chilling. I have no need to cast a spell. I have no target. Redreth, you're <laughs> so, ready. You're ready. Hang out. Fireball, correct? Correct. Kelly. I'm preparing to um, take a snapshot in case um, whatever's behind the door appears hostile. But um, because this room has given us sanctuary and a useful magical item, I'm not quite ready to uh, predetermine the potential hostility of the creatures on the other side of the door. Gotcha. Varric, your rated action is to kick the door shut? Uh, yes. And Miz? I'm just doing what all cats do, just sitting in the backside, licking my paw. Okay. All right. So, Haig goes ahead and opens the door. Behind the door, you see one, two, three, four giant cobras. Yes. <laughs> if they survive in any sort of fashion, I'm interested in seeing if we got vials for cobra venom. Hmm. Yeah. Right. yeah. So Feckish, you're hanging back. Redreth, you're you get to unleash the fireball. Okie doke. So it is a 20 foot radius sphere. So I will, I'm going to do that. So I just chuck it right between them. Make sure they're targeted. Right there. That's what I'm aiming for. Okay. Let me just get rid of my circle. God, it almost looks like we know what we're doing. Nah, couldn't be. <laughs> <clears throat> thing is, we do this a couple of times. It just ends up biting us back 50%. <laughs> and the, and the, the group might want to note that that is Giant Cobra 32. So just saying. That's um, awesome. All right. <laughs> Fireball. Sw oh, sorry. I think I just double clicked it. I think his assigns. I double clicked it. Sorry. Okay. Just the first. Yeah, I double clicked it. I thought I had to double click it to make it appear on the screen. So. No, the, the little buttons on the actions tab are always single click. I know, but it's like initiative, I had, to, I had to double click. Double. That is yeah, it's a everywhere very else on the dumb UI convention. It's a Absolutely very dumb, a dumb UI, convention UI convention to make a difference. All okay. double-clicks um, or all single-clicks. <laughs> and it did the exact same role twice. No, it didn't. I'm trying to... Oh, never mind. That's... No, it didn't. About one, two, oh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
but it didn't seem to do it in the right order. Weird. All right, so 32, 4, 15. So 4 went twice before 12 even went once. Interesting. Um, Ow. I can manually roll the damage dice instead, and we can, you can just adjust based no, on the first. We're just going to go with the second set. OK. So which will should oh. apply when you do the damage on them. All righty, and I did it right at the. I did not. I did not call out a higher level of this spell, so I'm just doing just the standard. Yeah. Three out of four. Nice shot. Dang. 12 is instant death, 4 is instant death, 32 is dying, 15 is injured. Not bad. And then I'm still going as far away from the door as I can. All right, go ahead and end your turn. Kaylee, you're up. Well... Whether or not it was hostile before, um, having had a fireball um, explode in its face, it's probably hostile now. So I'm going to attempt to shoot it. <laughs> probably a there will idea. be some. There'll be some smoked uh, cobra later on. Already pre cooked. And I do not. I do not get sneak. Correct. Correct. I don't think you'll need it though. No, didn't think so. Yeah, it's. Um, apparently dead. Yep. We now have cooked snake. Pre-cooked snake. <laughs> yes. No. Okay, well, that was just a little bit of a diversion. Things didn't even have a chance to respond. Jeez. For what's... Uh... For what's coming in the door behind us or something like that watch me back up against the door and then get grabbed as the door creeps open behind me <laughs> right just subtle distraction <laughs> all right so now what folks Um, I mean, a bunch of dead snakes. Do I kick the door shut or go in? I thought we were hungry. We got any I'm vials hungry. too? I, I don't. For really well cooked. You're, gonna, you're probably going to have to catch one alive if you actually want some of the venom. Yeah, yeah, probably. I've never yeah, milked a snake. You'll have, to, like, for sure. you'll have to like grapple it and try not to get poisoned. <laughs> yeah, animal um, handling. You you might you might be able to get um, a dose or at least a partial dose out of a freshly deceased snake, but um, probably not a burned one. That would, but. Um, not one that died from being burned alive. And um, it's probably going to require a fairly high DC survival check to extract. <laughs> Particularly without um, envenomating yourself. I like that term, envenomating. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I watch a lot of reptile YouTube videos and it's used a lot. <laughs> All right, so what are we doing? I was thinking of skinning some snake, but it sounds like the chance of us getting envenomized is pretty high. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, I'm going to 
Yeah, the, these are not constrictors. This is this is true. Yeah, I mean, do we? We haven't checked any of the other doors. I can close this one. Check some of the other doors, or we can go in this one. Get a good look. Well, there is a room there. Mm -hmm. Look around. Nobody stops me. I'm gonna step in the room. Let's do it. Yeah, I'm, I'm <laughs> gonna I'm gonna step up right here. Okay. Are we out of combat time now? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to move up there. Still um, prepared to shoot at anything that appears hostile, but also quite curious as to what's in this space. Mark has both his hammers up because he doesn't have his mace. Apologies if my um, phone dropping in and out of uh, Zoom is annoying anyone. My app is apparently having difficulty staying connected. I haven't noticed any issues. I seem to be okay. Okay. The, the, the phone call seems to be staying connected for now, um, but this is about the thir second or third time that I've noticed that my Zoom app on my phone says it's connecting. All right, so Varric, as you and your brother enter the room, you notice that in the center of this 30 foot octagonal room, an eight foot tall obelisk of black stone stands. Small and detailed Ooh. engraving is etched into the base of the obelisk. Two archways exit the room at the front and back while two alcoves stand to either side. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay. Hmm. Well, I don't have to tech magic up anymore, and I'm not going to cast that again. Um, I'll look at the rest of the group and be like, just somebody else want to take a look around before I just meander across the room? <laughs> I will, um, I will float in, um, kind of, um, checking for traps and things and seeing that, what can be seen. That ring of flying was really a useful gift for you, wasn't it? Yes. Especially for your character. Oh yes, my character is having so much fun with this. Come on, honey bear, let's go. All right. Sorry, guys. I'll be right back. Should we take a break, guys? Sure. Please. I could take, yeah, I could take one. All right. So yeah, let's take a 10-minute 10 10 break and um, maybe a little bit longer, but we'll definitely get going by the bottom of the hour. Going on pause and see you shortly. Okay. And all right. So back from break, you are in the octagonal room with the two exit ways and the two alcoves, well, one egress, one ingress, and two alcoves. Um, and the obelisk. and a really deep hole down there to the south. Ah, you noticed that, huh? It is a little hard to miss. Yeah, I, I won't jump in so this hole. The, so it is the a deep obelisk. hole. I thought it was a black obelisk. Sorry, yeah, so go the ahead. So the obelisk the center is of the room. here. Yeah, and it's just not depicted on the map. My apologies. Okay. No, that's fine. We just need to. Know where it is. Need yes. to know where, it's in the where it is. Okay. And if you go in a little further, you Ish. should appreciate the shape of the room better. But uh, okay. line of sight is limiting oh. you at the moment. 
Yeah, I will um, fly. How tall is this room? That's a very good question. The other one was pretty tall. I think it was like 50 feet tall. Let's see. Yeah, I mean, most of the time that I'm hovering. It's a, it's a 30 the, foot octagonal room. So I'm going to presume it's also 30 feet in here, uh, 30 foot high. Okay. Okay. Because usually when I'm hovering, I am, you know, at, you know, a couple of inches off the ground, just enough. So I'm not like putting pressure on the floor. There's, def there's nice definitely enough room. <laughs> there's definitely enough room for you to hover over the eight foot tall obelisk and still have plenty of space between your head and the ceiling. Okay, um, so yeah, I'm gonna come over here and maybe um, take a closer look at the obelisk and see what the obelisk, um, if the obelisk says anything. Yes. If I can, you know, decipher any pictures that, you know, might tell a story or if it seems purely decorative. All right. Well, pretty much the, it, it, as pointed out earlier, the pedestal that it stands on, um, let's see, probably made of obsidian or, um, or onyx. Great. The engraving is very detailed. You can tell that it obviously required some skill in this particular um, substance. But uh, there's no no flashing lights, no speak voices, no uh, ominous sounds, no reaction whatsoever to your presence. Okay. And it the um, carvings don't like depict a story or anything. I know you said they weren't um, trans translatable inscriptions, but that doesn't mean they're not pictures that tell a story, because pictures tell stories too. Okay, then I'm going to um, take a peek in here and go get the puppy. He's whining at the door again. Oh God, it's getting really hard to, to target on an object. All right. I'm gonna have to zoom in a little more and do a little more dragging. All right. So you look over there, you see an alcove. Nothing particularly notable about the alcove. Okay. Nothing in it, nothing on the walls, nothing on the ceiling. Nope. All right, check out the other one. Expecting the same thing, but always good to double check and make sure. Yep, absolutely. Seems to be pretty much the same. Okay, and then I'm gonna come over here. Started using roll 20 for a couple of other games and now I keep mis mixing up my uh, mouse button commands. And this appears to be a big hole. Does it go up as well as down? The hallway suddenly ends, opening into a 30 foot diameter vertical shaft that appears to extend both above and below, beyond the limits of sight. Small rocks and debris fall from above and pass down the shaft. Wind howls down the shaft into the darkness below. Ooh. And I should point out that the small rock and debris that falls from above is continuous, but inconsistent. Okay, so it keeps falling. It's not a solid 
it's not a consistent stream, but it does keep coming. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. Um, can we? Can you can time? Can I see something that looks like a? Can I see something that looks like a top or a bottom? Um, I am not using a light. I am just using my dark vision of sixty feet. Yep, as pointed out, um, beyond the limits of sight. So even with okay. your dark vision. Sorry, I missed. I, I'm. I must have missed that part of the description. That's okay. Um, I really okay. Get over. Can you? Okay. Then. Small rocks and debris. Can you hear? Can you hear anything hitting the bottom? Good question. That's an excellent question. As a matter of fact, Kelly is pretty confident that she is not hearing any sounds except for what, not the thud or landing of anything, but she does pick up what she thinks are the occasional scrapings of the debris as it brushes against the walls of the pit. Okay. So and at the very least, so deep it, enough where I'm not going close because my deck sucks. <laughs> not without a rope and somebody at the bottom to... Um, help you um, <laughs> um not this time does it look does it look like it's the same pieces of debris or does it seem like they're always different or i can't really tell mm. All of our party members, I believe that it's most likely for you, Ailey. You're really quiet, Keith. Sorry. I can't quite hear you. I, I'm, I'm leaning forward in order to um, confirm my edits. And as usual, it puts me in front of the microphone. Um, I was just saying that uh, of all of the party members, Kayla Lee strikes me as being the one to most likely note the kind of detail that would be able to identify if something is being the same. And though you can't say for sure, you do notice that, hmm, did I not just see that rock pass by? Or that looked like the same, the same piece of debris that just fell in front of me. Okay. So I can't be sure, but I have a strong suspicion exactly. that there's some kind of portal action happening and it's created a continuous loop. That gives, that ought to give um, Hague a, uh, a uh, multiverse like heebie-jeebie over what happened with his, um, Fighting Vecna over the summer, or what almost uh -huh. happened to him over the summer. <laughs> All right, so I am going to float back over here and inform people what I have found and ask them if they want me to um, see if I can, you know, explore the um, shaft and determine. whether it is in fact a loop, whether this is the only side exit, um, things like that. How high did you say the ceiling was, Keith? 30 feet. Okay. Um, how far, if Redreth were to throw something, how far can he throw? Redreth, huh. I want to, and here's my thought. 
He'll, he will take a drink from his bottle of whiskey and then underhand toss it into the, you know, do a nice high looping underhand toss while not getting too close to the edge, but just to see if the whiskey just keeps going through and through and through. Well, right now you're looking at probably close to 50 feet to the. Uh... Oh, right. Good. I just, I just taking a cue from Dan. I also don't want to get too close to it just on the chance that I might slip or fall in or something. I get that, but I, so, I mm -hmm. think it should probably be. So probably hole. something like about there, maybe. Yeah, exactly. You know, at least to the. Uh, yeah. The, where and now. then. He'll just take a good swig from the bottle of whiskey and then underhand toss it, attempting to underhand toss it so that it's going almost vertically by the time it gets to the center of there. Okay. So swig of good whiskey goes down the gullet and the bottle itself goes down the chute, spilling whiskey in all directions as it turns end over end. And a few seconds later, you see the cleric cries. Huh? The cleric cries. The cleric yeah. is crying. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. And I did not put the cap back on. So, yes, there's kind of whiskey going it, all over the place there. If it helps, I'll be it's Irish whiskey. Yeah, I suppose that helps a little. <laughs> <laughs> and a few seconds later, you see the bottle pass by. And a few seconds later, it passes by again. And a few seconds uh -huh. later, it passes by again, and again, and again. Well, there you go. go. Redreth turns. Redreth turns around proudly and bows to the rest of the group. Tail <laughs> <laughs> um, is gonna. Tail is gonna just kind of like, right, and then she's gonna. Um, let me double check something on my. Should I jump in and see what happens? Red dress. Um, Red dress. Uh, yeah. uh, Red no. dress will then to... mage hand and attempt to catch his bottle of whiskey. Ooh. Kaeli is going to his... um, hang on to one end of uh, her um, mundane rope and toss the other end in and see um, how far it goes. He's curious to know how long this loop is. I totally want to roll a dex roll or something to see if I can catch the bottle of whiskey with the mage hand. We're dealing well, with only the most important topics today, I have to say. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Mm -hmm. I want to take the sun blade. What is the diameter of the pit? 30. 30. Okay, so I want to take the sun blade and maximize its luminescence to up to 30 foot. Let's see if it, I want to see if it's radius or diameter. Don't throw it in there. Okay, no, I'm going, to tie it, I'm going to tie it to a rope and drop it down so I can illuminate the walls and see if there's any other breaks or entrances okay. that okay. we can see. I, I don't, does it, st does it stay lit if you let go of it though? I don't know. What are you tossing? I don't know, That's... but you do have someone who can fly. I am fly. not tossing. Oh, there you go. So you can... You do have someone who can fly, and I did suggest that as a possibility. Do you want me to investigate the shaft by flying through it? So I was going to say, okay, so then Haig just picks up Kayla and tosses her into the shaft. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be an opposed grapple check, please. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Kaylee, uh, meanwhile, please roll a um, intelligence check in the tower. Can my mage hand catch yes. the... I want to roll a check to see if I can try and catch the whiskey. Straight up intelligence, all right? Yeah. You're guessing it's a few hundred feet distance total. Okay. So yes, I'm going to um, probably like five, six hundred feet is what you're guessing. Okay, I'm going to ask my companions again. Should I fly through this shaft and see if this is the only opening? Redreth is a bu is busy attempting to catch his bottle with the uh, 
Mage Hand. With Mage Hand. Yeah. Uh, I don't need to ask you, you to do a dex check. Oh, I'll, oh I want to do one just to see. Just for the lols, if uh, I totally flub it. So, so what you want to do is you want to roll to see how um, spectacularly or um, abysmally you catch it, but you probably will eventually catch it. Unless I hit it just right to smash it against the side of the, the thing. Yeah, that's not bad. Oh. No, not at all. Not bad at all. It, it looks rather uh, acrobatic and adept. But obviously there's no risk involved. No kitty kitty. Okay. All right. So a, a very large cat about 50 times the size of your icons has just crawled onto the screen. Nice. And we're done. <laughs> <laughs> There's a percentage die for how much of the whiskey's left. Uh, I thought that seems reasonable. Man, more than I would have expected. A little less than half. I'm, I'm having it. So there's about 46% left. Sweet. I was on mute. Sorry. I'm going to, if nobody's going to answer my question, I'm going to um, fly you into the shaft. You were on mute. I didn't hear the question. Fly. Yep. Um, KLOE has asked this question multiple times. Um, oh, do they want the others to, want her to the shaft. fly into the shaft? Oh, sure. yeah. Um, so if nobody's answering or if they answer in the firm affirmative, I'm going to um, fly into the shaft and I'm going to attempt to fly upward. Do it. Um, actually, before you do so, I should probably throw something. Okay. Redreth will share some of the remaining whiskey with the cleric. So I'm presuming. Aww. So Yay. you were standing <laughs> over here about the time that you first asked that question, weren't you, Kaylee? Mm-hmm. Okay. So when you do ask the question to the group, understandably, but when you ask it, you hear from an undefined location the following. Despair if you continue thus. Despair if you continue thus. And you, all, you all hear it. It's an elderly, wise sounding voice, very, very non aggressive or intimidating. Okay. Well, so given question. that suggestion, <laughs> given, that, uh, given that, I'm probably not going to jump in the shaft. Um, But because is it trying to keep you away from? Is it reverse psychologizing? Well, it doesn't. All right, we, sound... need to, we need to be clear at this point, folks, um, as to what you are stating as characters or what you are stating as players. So that question okay. that just went out, are you say, stating that to Kaylee or is that you asking that of Alex? Alex. Okay. Okay, so it's going to answer verbalized questions from the PCs. Uh, okay. Um, yeah. I'm going to have to agree with Kaylee on this one. It doesn't sound like it's. Um, it, it sounds kind of kind of neutral. It's not necessarily going uh, to help us, but it is definitely not trying to harm us and in fact may be actively trying to prevent us from harming ourselves how is the uh we could test it though and ask the question 
what's the question that is asked to the two guys at the door in Labyrinth to find out who's the liar and who's the <laughs> one telling the truth? Oh, that puzzle. Oh, that yeah, that puzzle. The Sphinx yeah, asked us that one. The, the Sphinx gave us a, a similar riddle. Yeah. I love it. I mean, anybody remember how to word it? No, I off the top of my head, no. Benji, <laughs> if you want to go, if you want to look out the window, you can go to the window. Okay, but you do not bark at me. Oh, sorry, I forgot to mute before talking to my dog. But but there's no dog present. I think we're going to need to get you a a, a companion, Kaoli. <laughs> she kind of already has one. Just take the cat and put it on her shoulder. Put it on her shoulder. I was going to say, get her a little I would need... chihuahua that rides around on her shoulders. I, I, I was going to say, I need something either small enough that I can carry it while I'm flying, or something that can fly on its own. Just wear miserable. Until and unless. No, it has to until be. Until and unless I lose the ring. It has to be a dog. It could be a prairie dog. Actually, that actually a little slight diversion. Our ranger with a mirror. <laughs> that would look cool. <laughs> and you name him Timon. <laughs> no, I'm not going to have a meerkat named Timon. Um, <laughs> oh, my cousin's dog is the perfect pocket size. He's like four and a half pounds. Yes, a four and a half pound shipu. That's what I want. Uh, for Kay Ellily. All right, so what are we doing, folks? We are contemplating what our next move is. Um, Kay Ellily is going to suggest we try one of the other doors from the circular chamber. I'm still interested about the shaft. Don't go giving us the shaft. That's true. I could still tie my sun sword to a rope and lower it in. Uh, it's not going to get very far. But you absolutely could. It may or may not get far enough to see whether there's another uh, uh, opening. How much rope do we all have, all told? How much what? I thought it was, thought it was How 150. How much rope do we have as a group? Yeah, quite a bit. Yeah, at this point, you guys aren't exactly poor. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, so we have 150 feet of hemp rope. Plus another hundred feet of silk, that's 250, plus the rope of climbing, that's um, 310. Oh, I thought you said Which gold. may or may not. <laughs> no, rope. Yeah, that does seem more relevant here, absolutely. So, um, so 310 feet, if my math is correct. We still don't know 50. who spoke to us either. No, we don't. Um, but it does not seem to be. Um, it sounds. Can I do a divine sense neutral. while we're in here? Say that again. A little divine sense while we're in here. <laughs> so evil smells putrid. Holy good crap. Smells. My house just got hit with a gust of wind that made the whole thing shake. Oh, yeah. wow. It's been like that all day here. No, I, we just started getting the rain about an hour ago, and it's been a little breezy, but that's definitely the first time I'd say it's gotten windy. But yeah, I can see the palm trees sway, and they look like they're about to crack. Yeah, the last time I disappeared, I had to go repair my gate because it blew off the post. <laughs> oh, fun. 
I wish yeah. I had pine and trees. Warning, guys, I don't know if you've ever noticed this, but whenever we in California, where Albie and I are, actually get hit with a storm that is notable, it turns into something major for the rest of you guys. Hmm. So as this thing makes its way across the coast, I guarantee you it's going to wreak havoc. Usually do. You're not going to be uh, living out the Wizard of Oz movie, are you? <laughs> I hope not. Oh, I forgot to read to see if it changes its glow. New phase long says, while grasping the hilt, you can use a bonus action to cause a blade of pure radiance to spring into existence or make the blade disappear. While the blade exists, this magic longsword has the finesse property. The practitioner of the longsword's here for short summary. Plus one is attack and damage from his longsword. One just deals regular damage and says, slashing damage when you hit one deadly hit, you take an extra 1d8. Swords luminous blade emits bright light in a 50 foot radius and dim light to 15 feet. The light is sunlight. While the blade persists, you can use an action to expand or reduce its radius of bright and dim light. So it says, while grasping the hilt, I bring the blade into pure radiance, but it doesn't say, it says, I choose to bring it into radiance or make it disappear. Um, Which item I can expand. What's that? Which item are you looking at? The sun blade. Okay. So if I'm holding the hilt, bring the blade into existence, I can take it, use an action to expand it up to 30 feet to a maximum of 30 feet each or a minimum of 10 feet each. Interesting. Uh, so, projectile. so I could do a 30 foot. Uh, 30 foot radius of bright, reduce its radius of bright and dim light by five feet each to a maximum of 30 feet each. So I only want to light up the whole shaft and tie it to the sun blade and just kind of lower it into the hole to see if we can see anything in the walls of the pit. Okay. And I'm going to use, I'm going to tell my brother because I'm an undexterous uh, lump of Goliath. Yeah, I don't know if flesh oh. would quite apply. Yeah. Uh, to hold my belt, uh, pant loop because I'm a little nervous about being at the edge of this thing. Okay. For sure. And I'm going to check the knot two or three times because I'm not interested in losing the sunblade. Something, uh, it, it, Alex, your, your wording was something about it would be not in your, something about not being in your best interest to do it. Thank you, Keith. Mm -hmm. Now, what's the length of the rope that you're using? I just have 50 foot basic rope. Okay. So you tie it to the sun blade. Um, let's see. Oh, this presents an interesting issue. You may not want to proceed with this, and you will notice why as you're attempting to do so. Okay. Um, but because the sun blade itself is energy, it doesn't have any mass. Are you following me yet? Well, the uh, so it's, it's just the, the hilt, hilt flipping all over the place, which means not that the blade hilt could flipping break. all over the place, but the hilt will definitely, or the, the pommel will definitely be pointed down, which means the blade will be pointed up towards the rope. Towards the rope. Which means it's very unlikely as you would. lower it down that it won't sever itself. Bye-bye, Sunblade. If you do it. 
I say we just uh, continue thus. Because remember, we got a cool thing that was like, don't open this. Well, I might die and, and unless you're the chosen one. Well, and the other thing too is I can't get out of my head is that this is Kalatarius's place. If we're going the right direction, he's probably going to have stuff to deter us from continuing. You know what I mean? For sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess we can just go check those other hallways. We have two other hallways that are obvious. If, it, if they lead back to this, I guess we come back to this and try again, but I don't know. In the interest of saving time and keeping us moving forward, you do decide to do so and check the, other, Mike the other passages and you find that they are identical. They each open up to an octagonal room with an obelisk with a archway on the far side that opens into a sprawling pit of the same dimensions for a total okay, of so three I'm, pits. Like like going, okay, so there's three pits. They're all out at the compass points, south, west, east. Yeah. Correct. Okay. I'm going to say out loud, is my skin color grayish blue? Who's? Uh, Hags. I think I oh, he's trying to get a response from the voice. Correct. Oh, okay. Gotcha. So now, so, okay. I think I understand. Sorry, I'm thinking through this. That's no, good. I, I warned you to do do so. <laughs> Do not suppose too much, nor take unseen things for granted. What? And apparently it also interprets my what? <laughs> <laughs> And so you hear. Oh, jeez. Your perseverance will be rewarded. Now, if that's talking about going into the freaking shaft. I think we need to jump in. Take a leap of faith. Before we all jump in, I would like to. Um, oh, I'm not jumping in. A little, <laughs> do a little scouting. Let's go for a ride. Well, do a little scouting. Is that what you like? Is that what you said? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Which brother was it who asked the question about his skin color? Hague. All right, am I waiting for one of you or are you waiting for me? I was waiting for oh, Alex. Sorry, I was talking and I had myself muted. Yeah. Um, oh. In the campaign. Yeah, I'm, play I'm, I'm note taking. <laughs> Hold on. In, Go in, ahead, the campaign, in the campaign play channel, uh, is that roughly what we're seeing? Am I recording this correctly as, it, as we're, you're explaining it? Um, kind of, but there's one more octagonal room on the south that you, you skipped over. No, that's not quite what we're looking at. Yeah, remember, uh, yeah, this, the... The center should be the circular room. Right. 
Right. That's, um, but other than that, that looks like what I have recorded. So, so what are, uh, on, then on our map, what is that where my arrow is? Is that just a doorway we haven't explored or is that an Eric that's alcove an, with that's a wall? That's an alcove. It's, it's an alcove with a wall. Um, it appears to be an, uh, a nondescript dead end. Okay. <laughs> So I open the and doors then, to the circular room. That should give you a little better layout, but you can also move yourself around. Okay. And what was said or asked that prompted the your perseverance will be rewarded uh, response? I responded to his what? thing to the color of my skin. I went, what? So he answered my what question. Can I approach the hole and can Far approach the hole and ask, should we jump in? I can't handle it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying. So, so Keith, you're saying that in the campaign playing channel, that's what we're looking at? Yes, that is correct. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. And that's what I have. Not nearly as neat, but um, in response I'm to. Pencil that was, and paper. That was Farrick that asked, should we jump in, right? Correct. Yep. Extreme caution must be applied. So this um this room that Red Dress is in, the first one we looked at. Um if I had to the west. And I want to examine and see if there's anything hidden here in any passages or anything unique about these little alcoves here. Okay, so I presume you're doing a search then? Yes. What kind of check would that be? Uh, search check. Investigation? Search investigation. Yes. Oh, sorry. You want it in the tower, right? I, uh, my tower's yes. hidden. Where did my tower go? Oh, yes. there it is. It always puts it halfway up the screen behind my combat tracker. Well, that's interesting. So I don't see it. Okay. All right. Let me do that again. All right. I really do like that first roll, though. Yeah, this next one's not going to be that great. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> And guess what? You find a secret. Uh oh. Oh. Surprise, surprise. Pay attention. Pay no attention to the man behind this curtain. It is directly on the west wall. Okay. It's the guy with the spoon. Spoon! So, spoon! So, right there. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I will open the secret door look at you opening secret doors i'm gonna um hop down from the obelisk as he opens the door Creak. and the door opens to a short passage that leads into yet another room. That is octagonal? <laughs> no, this one is square. And in the center Ooh. of this 30-foot square room stands a 10-foot cube. The flat ceiling is only 10 feet above the top of the cube. So 20 feet total. OK. OK. Sorry, how big is the room? 20 foot cube. You should see now, but yes. Oh, no, no, 30 foot okay. square, 30 foot square room, but it's only mm, 30 foot square, but only 20 feet tall. 
Okay. Okay, and it just has the single opening to the so north. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go back over here and take a closer look at the eastern wall. Actually, the opening to the north appears to be just another alcove. And you said the cube was 10 feet? Yes. Okay. Oh. The cube is 10 feet on all sides. The room is 20 by, tw uh, the room is 30 by 30 by 20. Okay. Well, my head red touched up will, to die, so you guys red, can red fill dress. me in on the details later. I got a boogie. Okay, red dress, red dress, dress go examine. All right, man. All right, so hold on before you go. Let's make sure we all have our next um, game date confirmed. So <laughs> it was Christmas Eve. Uh, we're not even going to bother with that. So it looks like the next one will be on the 7th of January. Yeah. So yeah. everyone. Yeah, sure. that works for me. Yeah, I mean, I'm, you know, I would love to spend my birthday gaming on the 24th, but um, you know, just point, it's available out there. But I presume all you guys are going to be busy for thanks uh, for Christmas Eve. So, yeah. yeah, I might get in trouble if I play on Christmas Eve. Yeah, <laughs> I, I could see that. I would have to under be understandable. So, all right, we'll, we'll meet up again. I will also get in trouble. <laughs> Uh, I'll be able right to really talk to you before then, but uh, yeah, gang, we will all meet up on the seventh again then. Cool. We're still continuing. Right. Now we're just letting Albie go. I think we're just letting Albie go. Yep. Yeah. Thanks yep. for the gig, guys. Catch yep. you later. Do my best. Right, to man. Red Dress is examining the cube. Yes, I'm. I am coming up and examining the cube very closely. I'm going to um, attempt to examine this alcove um, because, oops. Stupid walls getting in my way. That's there, right. I, updated the I updated the drawing in the campaign play channel. So There we go. I'm going to investigate this northern alcove because I have a sneaking suspicion that it will probably lead to the um, to the um, Western octagonal room. Brilliant, I tell you, brilliant. All right, but meanwhile, for the cube, uh, let's see. Interesting. Interesting. Oh, well, there's no Very information. Interesting. The I am given no information on the composition of the cube, but we are going to say that it is made out of granite. But are also, there any writings or any? Do I sense any nope, warmth? Any nondescript. Yes. Um, if you bother to, are are you touching it at all, or just observing it? I am the person who touches the cursed object, so of course I am. Okay, so presuming, <laughs> not, so presuming that you knock on it, you can tell that it is hollow on the end. It is not a solid cube. Okay. Hmm. Oh, and are you flying, Kaylee? Oh, absolutely. Okay, then since you are flying, then you would notice from your vantage point that the cube has no top on it. Oh, no top. Okay. Okay. Well, I am. Well, in that case, yeah, I'm still investigating the um, northern alcove of the western room because um, 
Why not? Okay, so you've made it to that alcove. So I presume you're searching mm -hmm. for another secret door? Yep. Well, you don't find Let one. Let me find my... No? Don't find one? Nope. Okay. And I'm going to come back down over here to the um, cube. Do I see anything inside the cube? Nope, it appears to be empty. Interesting. I will inform Redress that the cube appears to be empty. Well, anybody else want to do anything? Yeah, they're leaving. I don't like any of this. <laughs> they're leaving you to deal with all of it. Yeah, well, My if he's not going to respond, if he's not going to respond, then I'm just going to come over here and check the um, Eastern alcove for a secret door. Because so it's hollow, but other... there should be. So it's hollow, and but nothing else about it. There's nothing in it. There's nothing, whatever. Mm -hmm. Redress will lose interest and make his way back to the main main chamber. Yes, at this, this point, room. at this point, you have nothing else that appears interesting to you. Okay. About that cube. I am attempting to search for a secret door. While they're poking around, I'm going to lean into Varric and say that, you know, all jokes aside, jumping into the hole is sound, starting to sound better and better. Yeah. Extreme, extreme caution must be applied. I mean, I can miss the step out of the circle. <laughs> Mm. Like if you can, if you notice stuff in the walls as you're falling, you can misty step to that ledge or area. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Do you want to do something stupid? <laughs> <laughs> um, Famous last words. Did I find anything? Yeah. Uh, on that one, did you? Yes, you did. That one does have another secret door. Okay. Um, we will open it. Second. It's your call, bro. I'm ready to do stupid stuff if you are. Ah. I mean, all else fails. You can see me on the ledge and just miss you step back to the ledge. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. All right, so who, who's taking the leap of faith? The only one with Misty Step. <laughs> well, so when Kaylee heard, when we all heard despair, if you continue thus, she was flying up through the shaft, correct? Well, she hadn't decided no, to I go did. yet. She asked if she should. I had just suggested 
I had just suggested um, that, you know, maybe I should fly into the shaft and explore. But some voice discouraged you from doing so. Hmm, go figure. I also, ha I also have Misty Step, so. You want to hold hands and jump in the hall? See what happens. I was thinking I could probably go try a different one. Although I'm still ah, carrying my whiskey, my, my whiskey bottle I still have with me, so I might go toss that down another shaft and see if it does mm -hmm. the same thing. That might be worth seeing if they go or if one comes out comes down the other shaft or something. Right. Hmm. The glass, the bottle was also wasn't damaged when it was tossed in, so that's promising. <laughs> Miz, you sleeping? Mouse. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have to fly or fall or whatever. Can't you just spider? Mouse. <laughs> so, where do you want me a spider to? No, I'm thinking about spidering to some some tunnel walls here and seeing if there's any other platforms. If we're not the only platform in the the ever falling shaft. Good Just, job. Good job, Hague. These are actually called the pits of Everfall. No way. Yep. Ever fallen. Well, it, it, not only in the name, it's also in the traps. If you remember last time, do you remember the, the, the swishing noise we heard on our way down here last time? The, the spiders? I mean, I mean, what the worst that can happen? Are you thinking maybe the snakes came from the shaft? I don't know. You raise a good point. Oh. There. So that's the direction Redruth is going to go. He's going to try out the west shaft with his 46% full bottle of whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> do, 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 do. You're going to go all the way around instead of through the secret door, huh? Uh, yeah. He had already gone yeah, back to the, mid, to the middle room. Okay. So. I'm looking for the secret door in this alcove on the um, eastern side of the south octagon. Because oh, something tells me it should be there. Sure enough, they do interconnect. And then just for kicks, I'm going to double check the um, northern alcove to see if it leads anywhere. Because well, I thought on the other just one because the other one didn't, didn't doesn't mean this one. Just because right. the other one didn't doesn't mean this one can't. I'm doing the take a drink, lob the whiskey bottle, catch it with mage hand trick whiskey again. Whiskey in the gyro. So, uh, which shaft would you like me to examine? Sounds like whichever one you please. Once we find out what, uh... oh. I don't know. I don't know. Actually, That's a good question too. I'm coming back over here and telling people. There's another corridor to the north. Really? You, you get no response because I'm already flying back. <laughs> 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 yes, you know me. Woman of few words. <laughs> you, 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 you really got to get yourself a long dress just so you've got that vampire effect. <laughs> you just look like you're hovering as you're going along. 
but she doesn't like dresses. They tend to get in the way. <laughs> yeah, true, true. <clears throat> and then um, I'm going to head this way. <coughs> Do, 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 do. Uh, options now, Maddie. But do, do we still pursue the? I'll see if the northern way is uh, fruitful. Otherwise, I'm bolting and jumping in the hole and see what happens. All right. <laughs> All right, let's do this. Miz, if you want to back out, follow us. To, I'll follow up to the Northern Passage. I am curious, though. Well, it doesn't, it's really weird that this doesn't have a similar symmetry. Did you roll in the tower okay. for investigation for your other one? Yeah, I think so. Well, I guess it Actually, really for, the one on, for the one on the, on the West, I didn't actually roll. He just said I didn't find anything. Oh. Interesting. Yeah, I really don't like any of this stuff. <laughs> so I guess I'll just I'll just follow where I know Alex or K. Ellie found something. So I'll head north too. And more than likely okay. run into her on on her way back. Yep. I'll stay at the, the southern base of that alcove and just kind of see if I can keep eye contact with Redriff on on the other thing and Kaylee on the bridge. So, so Redreth uh, tosses the bottle into the shaft. Does it do the same trick that it did on the south? Disappear out the bottom and come again out the top, or does it disappear and not come back? Seems to behave and uh, display the same behavior. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, I come back from the passage to the north and I'm like. Redress is going back up to the top here and seeing if he can find anything. And I'm just like, we didn't have to fight the undead. Go ahead and roll. Investigation, yes, right? Yep. <laughs> and you find nothing. Time, time, time is on my side. Yes, it is. Hmm. So at this point, you guys are not discovering anything else new. Yep. All right, let's go. Are we going to go like we're running towards the public pool, Maddie, <laughs> and uh, and jump in cannonball style? Or that's it. That's uh, okay. Extreme so caution just, must be applied. Just, just just remember, Hag. He has misty step. You don't. I don't. Yep. So, but this, yeah, see, that is although, my point. I'm going to run. Although I'm going to run with him, and then as we get to the ledge. I'm going to act like I'm jumping in and stop. <laughs> Although worst, ca worst case, I could jump, jump in and catch you and then Dimension Door is both out. I'd just blow a spell slot to do it. Nah, okay. I'm gonna, yeah, I've got it. 
I'm doing that and I'm going to fake That's him better out. Better than losing a party member. He'll understand after he goes in and go, ah, yeah, that's why he did it. Is it, though? <laughs> I'm doing the, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Got to pop your oculus, or pop your uh, monocle in, though. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh. What is the uh, what is the English uh, what is the English phrase for have a good trip? I know they have one. Help me out, Miz. Proper English for cheerio. Stop. Have a good have a good trip. Have a good holiday. Nice holiday. All right. So I'm Meg and Kaylee are around the edge of the southern pit. As Varric finally decides to make the commitment and hop on in. Whoosh! And he disappears down through the shaft. About three or four seconds later, he wishes right past them. About two seconds later, he wishes past them again. About a second later, he wishes past them again, continuing to pick up speed. Sweet. <laughs> Oh, shit. As you fall the first time, you feel slightly disoriented shortly after hopping off the, uh, the platform. <laughs> then you see an, a platform that is empty. None of your companions are there. Then you see another platform with your companions. And as you continue to fall, you see empty platform companions, empty platform companions, empty platform companions. How do you I have a question. Thing? I have a question. And, and yeah. we will just come at this point that you reach terminal velocity before any other action is. Mm -hmm. okay. I have a question. With Misty Step, does it arrest his momentum or is he going to smack the floor? Kind of late to be up? asking that, don't you think? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sir, I when thought you... about it after I said I jump in the hole. I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> well, terminal velocity yeah, work can, in this universe. Yeah, and how does how does momentum work for KLE's flying? Can she counter <laughs> your momentum by matching your speed and then trying to wait, wait, wait? Speed? I have an idea. What I, if I think she would for step? most of you, but I think his weight adds an additional complication. As as right. the paladin <laughs> says, "Hold my beer." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I. I'd be able to do it for Mizrim or Redress or even Feckish, but um, for the Goliath brothers, I, I can't could... lift you. <laughs> I would say you could probably slow him down, though. I don't know if it would yeah. be an arrest thing. I don't think like I could a, stop you guys, arrest. but I might be able to slow you down, But because I can't lift you. Even with none of your gear on, I probably can't lift you very well. I just want to point out at this point, I do have a scroll of Ray's dead. So, <laughs> so here's the next that, question. That's nice. Does he have a perception of how long the shaft is? Like every time it resets, can he see it coming? Can he see the platforms empty and with us on them with timing distance or no? He seems to have a lot more visibility and advance warning of the platform that you guys are on um, and a much briefer um, observation period of the empty platform. Based on your briefer. disorientation, you are guessing that it's you above. are being teleported shortly after passing the platform you were on where your companions are. And the second platform is above the rest of the Yes, park. it's above us. Right. Very, every time very you set, briefly. You're correct. Very briefly after where you teleport to. All right. I will try to get back to I, everyone. You probably else. have about less, somewhere between a half and three quarters of a second between the time that you see the platform and the point that you pass it. Redruth has an idea on how to slow him down. Uh, well, here I can, again. I can cast question. fireball in the in the chamber there. <laughs> That's a bad idea. 
Well, thermal pressure. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I can see some uh, some potential there. So misty step. That's a good question. Does misty step cancel out terminal velocity, or is it going to be based on what your velocity was at the point of casting? That's a really good question. I like the physics. Uh, I like the, the just even pondering that question is kind of like, hmm, that's a good question. <laughs> I think he's going to you missed this step to a place where there's something under you. You are not falling. Momentum doesn't stop. You are on the ground just the same as if you fell there. Impact happens just the same. All the misty step oh, cool. does and the fall early at 20 feet instead of 50 feet. So could I misty step up and then over like just as I pass, like burn two spell slots and go up to slow down a little bit and then into the chamber where my uh, ah. allies are. No, because it's not going to do anything. I'm still going to have the same level of momentum because I'm just bamfing back up and I'm still falling that same speed. I'm just going to eat yeah. it. I'm bamfing back to where everybody else is. Well, let's let's see. Let's have Kaoli fly, match your that's, velocity, and see if she can slow well, you down. Well, that's my point. I can't be like, hey, guys, there's another zone. Oh, <laughs> no, that's what he was Try saying. He can, see you. <laughs> he can see you coming. Or you can see our... Well, I mean, right. and you can also yell at us like as soon as you're... 40 feet away well yeah i don't know well what here that, that yeah, think about it this fast. way think about this to, just to really muck up your brain what happens if you misty step presuming range were not an issue from the pole okay. to the equator or vice versa mm -hmm. think about how fast and in what direction you're moving through space at the equator as opposed to when you're at the pole if momentum is conserved yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> this yeah that, the whole idea behind all this it, it might actually yeah, be a very good reason gonna, why there's a limitation in range on misty step as opposed to a teleport <laughs> spell so i am going to say that if he's moving full speed going in he's moving full speed going out yeah for sure <laughs> Yeah, I'm bouncing back to everybody. Actually, no. Let me reiterate that. Upon careful consideration, the direction of travel is going to be very significant. So if you misty step in the direction of travel, you will halt your momentum. But if it is perpendicular to your momentum, right. that momentum will be preserved. Right, and before you ask, with... there is no ledge extending into the platform or into yeah, the I gotta go the, the full 30 feet into the right. where everybody else is. <laughs> this is awesome. So I have to bamf at an upward angle to slow down a little bit. Uh, if you time your bamf and go sideways, no, never mind. That wouldn't. You would be just as. You wouldn't yeah. bamf in the direction. You would still gravity still works. You would just teleport vertically, but still direction going down. I was thinking like a wind runner. If you changed your your direction of your right. fall. Yeah, yeah. No, I'll just I'll just eat it. It's fine. <laughs> I don't know I mean, if it's fine. Really you're talking fine. about. You're yeah, not, it's not, not going to be fine. fine. Yeah, it's not going to be fine. We have to arrest Terminal velocity, somehow. Goliath. <laughs> in armor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. There in the in the in the campaign play channel, that's what uh, the Goliath is seeing at this point. <laughs> I have to open it again. But there, may, there may be other ways Excuse to slow me. your momentum. You can land on Haig. You'll be fine. <laughs> Haig may not. And you got to you. You've got to wait another. Uh, uh, let's see. What do we have? Well, I just thought of something that would be very interesting. What's that? What? And I believe it would work. 
but it's up to you to solve, not me. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I have. Uh, let me see. I'll, I'll give you a little hint of what I'm thinking, though. Um, Kayla Lee may not be able to carry um, Varric, but Varric could carry Kayla Lee. Oh, swap the ring in the air. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. So we got it. While we're falling, we I have to attune to the ring. <laughs> so I can and grab the ring. Doesn't and take if you, if you try okay. and catch if you try and catch the ring and miss it, it then becomes a bullet. No, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Too valuable. No, she, she has, has to, to jump back it. to me. Yeah, I'm not doing <laughs> that. <laughs> So all she has to do is fall. You can see why I couldn't resist suggesting it. <laughs> Red Redreth yeah, reaches I, I, into his his Redreth reaches into his inventory and pulls out a uh, bucket of popcorn and sits down to watch the festivities. And it, you look like someone watching a vertical tennis match. <laughs> well, I, I mean, I'm th I'm thinking that all she has to do is control her flight to where she's she's falling at the same pace like she should be able to control what she's doing enough to line up with him and then mm -hmm. they can swap in the air fly her back to the thing give the ring back i think that's a great idea it's actually it's actually not a bad idea <laughs> um that's crazy but it's crazy she does this, <laughs> before she does this he's going to tie um tie the ring to the end of a piece of string and tie the other end to her wrist. That's very smart. <laughs> and, how, and how long is that piece of string twine or other tether going to be? I'm probably gonna give it about probably gonna give it about um, oh, I don't know. How long is it normally, I think the <coughs> full length is somewhere in here. I have my screen lifted. Oh, I should point out there is one other thing too that you notice at this point after falling past the shafts or the platforms repeatedly. Um, whereas the platform mm -hmm. that your companions are standing on is flat and leads at a level angle to the rest of the level it is on, the other platform that is empty actually contains a Airway going upwards. There is no landing. Okay. So it's like literally the stairway comes down and just opens out into the shaft. Okay. Um, the string is a about, little bit more um, difficult to hit because keep in mind the angle of the of the of the tunnel is basically opposite the direction you're falling. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So um, it's. It's a 10 foot piece of string, so I'm probably going to give it um, probably about a meter between where it attaches to my wrist and where it attaches to the ring. I want to make sure that there's plenty of play so that um, however I collide with Varric, um, it's got plenty of room so that we're not like too tangly, um, but definitely want to make sure that I can retrieve it. <laughs> and once I've got this firmly attached, I'm going to put it back on. And um, I really wish 5e still to... had a rope use skill. Had a which one? A yeah. Rope, rope use. Use skill. rope. Yep. Oh. Tying knots and then throwing lassos. Yeah. Like that. Once I've got it firmly attached, I'm going to put it back on and um, attempt to um, catch up with Varric and see if he can, um, <laughs> if we can swap. All right, so this definitely is going to get very interesting because either you're going to need to time your jump just right, which is going to be ridiculously difficult because you're not going to be hitting his speed at the same moment. 
So right. you're more than likely going to have to engage in some form of ad hoc aerodynamic adjustment, learning how to speed up and slow down your fall by spreading yourself or pointing yourself in different directions. Mm -hmm. So the potential for comedy here is just absolutely insane as we watch the, the, the rogue pass by at varying rates of speed and various interesting poses of uh, contortion and other um, angular disjointism. Um, splayed eagle. Uh, let's see, inverted jester. Um, uh, clawing insect. Uh, anyone feel free to add some uh, some descriptions of the various poses that we see the uh, ranger pass by in before she eventually manages to sync up her speed with the Goliath. With that in mind, please roll a percentage die. Okay, Lily. Ooh. Ooh. Interesting. Hopefully, that's, that hopefully is that's not a bad effect. No, that's a good effect. <laughs> that means that you are able to relatively quickly adjust your aerodynamics and get caught up to him in speed and do not have too much difficulty in figuring out how to do so. And again, that, makes, that makes sense because this isn't your first time in free fall. You've had a little experience now with your ring of flying and you kind of understand how to redirect the wind and use it to push you in the direction that you want to go. So okay. after about, then, we're going to say about 30 to 45 seconds after you jump off the ledge and you've at this point noticed the other platform several times over, you hit terminal velocity and get close enough to Varric that you guys are able to pull each other in, um, in, in towards each other. Needless to say, given his right. method versus yours, he pulls you into him. He doesn't move very much from your efforts. Right. And then I'm going to um, tell him that um, he needs to put on the ring that I'm about to try and give him. Okay. <laughs> and then he can fly us out of here. <laughs> and uh, we're going to do a dex check on that. For, for All Varric. right. Straight yes. up dex. Uh, yep, Varric. Straight up dex check. The, the string will give you a chance to try again if you blow it. <clears throat> Um, yeah, you get your fingers on it, but it's the, the wind blows it right out. So Haley, the, the ring, you know, doesn't rip away, but bounces off and you feel it tug against the string for a second and you pull it back in. Reel it in. Mm -hmm. Anything to say to Varric? <clears throat> Come on, perfect opportunity. For no. It. All right. Let's try it again. Hey, hey, Kaylee doesn't say much. This is true. This is true. Just, you're, you're being she just consistent. Kind of pulls, she just kind of pulls the ring back back up and... Not even a raised eyebrow or something? <laughs> no. No. All right. So second this attempt, is, he does manage... This is an admittedly difficult maneuver. <laughs> second attempt, he does manage to grab the ring and successfully put it onto his finger. Of course, this is your first time with the ring, and though attunement may not be required, you're still not exactly used to controlling it. So the, um, yeah. the reduction in speed is a bit bumpy. Kaylee beginning to yeah. wonder if you might have been better off just um, jumping to the ledge on your own. Because <laughs> even if, even if he is being relatively gentle for a Goliath, you're still bouncing around with a stone body. Yes. So it's like... Yes. Uh, ah, and ah, it's ah. not particularly comfortable and... And, and, um, and, and figure a couple of fingers get crushed, not permanently damaged, but you're just like, ah, shit. <laughs> yes. And I'm just kind of wondering if there's any advice that I could give him and coming up completely empty because so much of what I do, I just do it by feel. It just feels right to do it that way. So there's really nothing I can say to give him advice. Well, you, well, you did pick up one lesson. You have yet another reason to avoid the Goliath armpits. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but in terms of how to fly, I, I can't really 
tell him anything. You no, do. You, you, you kind of are able to help him. You're like, you know, point down. No, spread your arms. Uh, pull back. You know, so, you yeah. know, it's, it's a little hasty. And in the moment, it certainly isn't um, prescribed. But you're able to give him a, a few pointers. And presumably, where are we trying to land? On um, with, with where our friends. everyone else. Is, I mean, oh, you want to return back to the ledge with the rest of your companions? Just go to the other one. Yeah. I, I will say trying to return to the ledge should be relatively easy. However, that being said, um, I'm looking forward to dex checks from both Haig and Redreth to see if you two avoid the two of them as they barrel onto the landing. Redreth's busy eating popcorn. He's not even trying to dodge. Oh, okay. Well, then... <laughs> Not neither of you m missed um, the the barreling figures that come um, lobbing at terminal velocity onto. Oh no no no, that's right. You, he's flying, so you're reduced. Um, you're not barreling yeah, through. Yeah, it's not okay. So yeah, once you got the ring on, you're terminal, able to control but... it. You figure it takes you about six, seven, eight passes before he's like, okay, I think I got this, and then attempts to make a, a soft landing and is able to do so. Yeah. Um, in front of his brother. Oh, right. And um, uh, Redreth's neck is no longer getting exercise. <laughs> I will then, um, I, I will then uh, take the ring back and um, put it put it on and put the spring away. Give me that because, <laughs> well, not quite <laughs> that rude, but that that's that's kind of the idea. This was a loan, not a gift. <laughs> yep. And he didn't do too bad, so you got to give him some credit. All right. Yeah, so no, he did perfectly fine. With that, we've only got about four minutes left in the session. So I'm going to suggest that um, how to get from this level to the next level is something for you guys to dwell upon for the next session. Um, we do have a month until then. So um, I will try to make sure that I get this month, this week's recording posted relatively early on so it doesn't get rusty. Um, yeah. And then I can really, listen to it. You'll be able to view it. We... Right. Yeah. You'll be yep. able to review before it before our we... next session. Yep. And with that, I think. So we are now on the platform. Yep. The lower platform is we'll have to figure out how to get back up to the upper one. That should be fun. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I believe we've had another successful session. Uh, my only thing is, is that I, I do find our pace surprisingly slow, but it isn't boring. Yeah. Meaning that I don't think we cover as much ground as we really should in the session. But again, I think that has a lot to do with the detail and the carefulness that we are. We, you guys are definitely not hack and slashers. And this campaign is not meant for hack and slashers. We, we're enjoying all the puzzles that you offer us. And that's that's part of my goal. I like it to make I like it to be a little bit more in depth than just battle tactics. Um, the inscriptions help, the, the riddles help, the traps help, um, the, the opposing characters help, the lore helps. Um, and you know, once again, I got to give credit to the original authors of this uh, series, um, which are also Dragonlance authors. So it actually would be a very, very good <coughs> transition to Dragonlance after we're done with this campaign. But Awesome. And if you're um, not, if you're looking for something other than the... Um, published 5e versions um somebody did a um a strip out the lore version before Dragonlance was a permitted setting um on dm's guild um of some of the older Dragonlance modules um, um converting them to fifth edition uh you might uh, hmm those might be mine so or a part of mine i did the maps for some of those Dragonlance conversions okay um because uh he did it in collab uh he posted it on dm's guild with co in collaboration with uh rob tui yep um yeah if, if, if his name is vodkard i did the maps for the first four or five of those modules okay yeah so, so he so those are 
those are the old school modules, not the I, um, if we, if, newly published I, fifth edition one. I don't think we're going to do the uh, the um, War of the Lance campaign. Um, I have done that okay. a couple of times and it's very detailed. I, I don't know. I might because, you know, I've, I've worked on the maps. I've got so much detail um, stuff that will go into Fantasy Grounds. I might wind up doing that. And, but, and I know that some fans of the, uh, of the older settings are looking at the 5th edition uh, official WotC versions of them and are like, ew. I know some people are like that. Mm -hmm. They're not pleased with what wizards is doing with yeah they are they are modules. kind of cleansing a lot of the the racial uh depictions that yeah I, I, admittedly they're not politically correct but they're historically accurate so i'm, I'm sorry you, yeah you and respect and i mean that's that you know i i respect that they are historically accurate um does that mean it's right no does that mean that i expect all the player characters to uh conform to modern sensibilities absolutely but having you, those things do expect in the world to, is you do expect them to conform to modern sensibilities the the player characters mostly yes the, the players may be sensitive maybe. about the, it the players may right. be. I, no, the, I, not the characters yeah, the players that's right right um because modern sensibilities are very different from from even you know 50 years ago um yeah I, I i think there's no no reason why we shouldn't discuss it but to insist that modern sensibilities need to dictate the way that we play we um conduct ourselves in a historical setting is i'm sorry bullshit yeah yeah we need to be sensitive to everyone's you know triggers and comfort levels but that doesn't mean we have to completely strip out the historically accurate um politically incorrect you know yeah sla stuff. slavery is a great example i mean we can acknowledge that slavery is a bad thing and that we wouldn't want to per propagate it in this time but to insist that slavery is not an element in a game set in this setting is ludicrous absolutely absolutely being sensitive about it um is is different than I would probably try it to avoid creating a setting where all the slaves are black, but it doesn't mean that I'm going to avoid creating a setting with slaves. Yeah, and um, you know the um, the American slavery is the one of the absolute worst types of slavery, um, keeping them oppressed and pretending to believe that they are. Oh, all right, I got to take you know. off, guys. Have yeah. a good one. All right, Jim, yeah. have, a, okay. have yourself a very happy holiday. Um, I'm sure we'll all be in touch in the game channel over the next couple of weeks. Um, and um, we'll see you all on the 7th. I'm going to go ahead and can the recording at Sounds this good. point. Yeah. And uh, y'all yep. have a good one.